Hi everyone, this is Tom, Tom Kwong again. Today I would like to talk to you about benchmarking and how you can do it like a pro. Have you seen the hands-on design patterns and best practices with Julia book? If not, I highly recommend that you get a copy. It shows you how to write more idiomatic Julia code. The first thing that you might want to do when you uh, benchmark your Julia application is to use the time macro. Okay, So the time macro uh, is very convenient because it comes for free when you start the Julia repo you already have access and it gives you some key information when you run it you can get you know uh, how much was the elapsed time when you run your function and you you can also get the uh, number of allocations and also how much memory was used when you ran that function okay so these are key essential information that has an initial intuition about how your function performs um, but that's not enough right because what you would have to do uh, is to eliminate the noise when you run your performance test linux and mac and even windows nowadays system is always doing something in the background right so when you run your performance test you are getting some number that is not quite accurate in in some sense right and so in order for you to understand better about the performance of your function you really want to run it multiple times okay and so uh it, you know without using any packages right just using the time macro you should be able to just measure the performance multiple times already because you just need to run it over and over and over again and then when you're done you collect all the statistics and then you can you know come up with your own methodology uh, such as taking the minimum time or taking the median time or even the mean time etc right in this example you will see that the timed macro t-i-m-e-d macro will return a tuple where you can capture not just the return value of the function but also the timing measurements so, uh, so that's one way to do it, um, but it's not convenient, right? Because you have to write that loop, and then you have to collect the data, and then you have to come up with the statistics. Another problem with the time macro is that it will include the compilation time of the expression. So if your expression includes an anonymous function written out, then the time to compile that expression will be included in the result of your time macro, which is not something that you always want. In order to fix that, what you, what you can do is to create a wrapper function. And from the wrapper function, it will include the expression that you want to benchmark against. Then you will use the time macro against the wrapper function. In that case, you will not include the compilation time at all. The best way to do this is to actually use a package called Benchmark Tools. So BenchmarkTools.jl is a very convenient package that almost everyone uses to measure performance of their functions. Okay, It comes with a couple of very handy features. Okay, For example, um, when you just want to do something quick, Right, you can use the B time macro. You, you can supply the function to the B time macro, and B time will just execute that function many many times. Okay, and at the end it will give you the result, um, and that result will be the minimum elapsed time of the uh, of all the samples that it take by running your function. Okay, and so uh, so it literally eliminates the work that you would have to do if you were to use the time macro because you don't have to write the loop, you don't have to collect the statistics, and it gives you the minimum elapsed time already. Uh, and of course, it also gives you the GC time and also the, um, the amount of memory being allocated and, and how many allocations been done. So, so the B time macro is already very convenient as well. 
Um, but then I would say the if you want to get even more insight, you want to learn about the edge benchmark macro. Okay, so so the edge benchmark macro, what it does is the same thing as what Bitcoin would have done, except that it will give you the result in an object, right? So when you run the benchmark macro, you will get back with an object that tells you, um, you know, not just the uh, sim simple statistics like the minimum, the median, and then the, the, the maximum um, of all the out of the, all the samples that it has taken, but also you would um, be able to access the, the all the sample data, right? So if if the benchmark macro ran your function, uh, let's say you know two thousand times, right? So you will be able to access those two thousand samples, um, and the timings are all just together in an array, and you can use your favorite plotting package to to understand the uh, those performance statistics that they gathered. Uh, for example, you might want to understand the performance by plotting a histogram, right? And so we can see the distribution of your performance data. Maybe out, you know, ten percent of your your samples uh, somehow is doing a lot of GCs, and you don't know why, right? So, um, so may, maybe your function is allocating too much, using too much memory, and then you will see a lot of GC time. Um, when you plot that out it's in, in a histogram, you will be able to see that distribution. Um, and um, so, so that benchmark macro will give you a good way to do it. So you may wonder why benchmarktools.jl wants multiple evaluations per sample. So I was able to talk to the expert Jarrett on Slack and here's the reason why. Your machine, even though when you measure the time using Julia, it gives you nanosecond accuracy, the reality is that the accuracy is not going to be in the nan nanosecond range. It's more like in the microsecond range. So if your function runs so fast, results coming from the re evaluation would not be very accurate. And in order to make it more accurate, the idea is that for every sample, you run your function many times, okay? So for example, you run it a hundred times, and then from after that, you have your timer result divided by 100, and you get a per execution runtime. Now, whether it's B time or benchmark macros, um, there are other things that you can do uh, with it, okay? So uh, for example, um, sometimes you may want to run GC, the garbage collector, before you start running the benchmark process, right? And so it will be pretty easy. You, you put the GC trial equals true as a um, uh, kind of a key value pair argument to the macro. And if you want to run the garbage collector before every sample, right? then you can add the GC sample equals whatever uh, at the end of the, uh, the the macro. There are other goodies. Okay, so for example, if your function takes a long time, okay, uh, so let's say, you know, it takes 10 seconds to do something, okay, right? So in that case, what you would want to do is to increase the elapsed time for your benchmark uh, call. So with the B time or the benchmark macro, what you can do is to supply this seconds argument. So you can say, I want to, you know, let's say my function runs, you know, 10 seconds long, normally. And, um, and I would like to take, you know, at least maybe 30 samples, right? So I would like to run my benchmark for five minutes. Uh, of course, I'm not going to just wait for it and just staring at my screen the whole time, right? Um, so I'll probably take a coffee, just like this. Watch TV, right? Turn on Netflix. No, I'm, I'm I'm kidding. So you you must be doing some additional coding while while you're just waiting for that ben benchmark to come back, right? So by the time it's done, then you would have enough samples to to understand you know the statistic of the uh, performance test results. 
one interesting thing about the B time and benchmark macro. Did I just tell you that it takes five seconds to do? Let's measure the time, okay? Do at B time and run your function, right? And chances is, is that it takes 10 seconds, approximately, not five, okay? So, so you may wonder why, <laughs> why is it taking 10 seconds rather than the advertised five seconds, okay? So what happens is that when you run B time or ben benchmark macro, there are three steps involved when you run B time, for example. The first thing that it does is to create a what's called a benchmarkable object, okay? okay. And the second thing it does is to it goes through a tuning exercise, right? The issue is that the bench B time macro doesn't even know what your function looks like. It doesn't know how many samples it wants to take and, and how many evaluation per sample uh, it wants to um, use. So, so these benchmark tuning parameters are being figured out in that tune process. Okay, so first step, create benchmarkable objects. Second, do the tuning. The third thing it does is it actually run your benchmark. Okay, turns out the tuning exercise takes about the same time as it does the benchmark itself. So when you say, I want my benchmark to run five seconds, so the when you involve all three processes, you end up spending about 10 seconds each. Okay, and so that happens every time you use the B time or the benchmark macro. Of course, we're smart, we're programmers, we, we say the first step and the second step. Uh, if I already know my tuning parameter, right, then I would not need to do it again and again. So if I benchmark the same function or an alternative, or an alternative of that same function, then I may just use the same tuning parameter for benchmarking. Uh, so in that case, I would just I would not use the standard B time or benchmark macro. I will go through that three steps myself. I will create. I will use the benchmarkable macro to do the first step. Then I will use the tune bang function, and I will keep track of that tuning parameter set. And then I will run the benchmark um, itself, right? And so uh, if I do that, then I will only spend five seconds on that benchmark run at most, and that's what it's supposed to do, okay? So that would be a quick way for you to um, you know, improve your productivity uh, of running these benchmarks, because sometimes these benchmarks will run, run longer, um, depending on of your use case. So, um, so if you learn how to do uh, B time, how to do benchmark, you also learn how to do the three steps manually, and then you can, you're pretty much there, and you can do, you know, any type of benchmark like a pro. Okay, so this is everything I want to talk about today. What I have not covered is how to create a benchmark suite where you can run it for every release of your software. Um, I think that's a separate topic. So maybe in the future, when I have time, I will record another video to go over that. Okay? Thank you for watching. See you later.